Many of you remember him as the general manager of the San Francisco 49ers. He was the executive of the year in 2011. There's that three-year window we were talking about off the top of the show where the 49ers, they lost the NFC title game to the Giants in overtime. They lost the Super Bowl by a field goal to the Ravens. They lost the NFC championship game in Seattle by six points. Like the Expos in 79, 80, and 81. Trent Balky, how you doing? I'll bet it till you get till that introduction. <laughs> Brought back a lot of bad memories. <laughs> Sorry to tell you. Good and bad. Good and bad. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, it's it's. I, I, how often do you think of that period of time? Oh, you, you know, you think about. You never forget the Super Bowl, right? I mean, that's the. You probably think about that every day the rest of your life. You know what what you could have done, what you should have done. When you know, but. You know, it was a good period. It was a great period for the organization. Personally, it was a great period. But, uh, you know, you, you felt like you left, let some get away. Yeah. And, now, of course, the last two years, uh, the quarterback of the 49ers was uh, Colin Kaepernick. Um, his career ended when yours ended in San Francisco. His career ended. Did you? Would you have thought that that was possible? No, I mean, you, you're always looking, you know, at, at the present and then looking into the future. You know, Colin did an awful lot of good things for us on the field and off, you know. And, uh, you know, his his career, like mine, is is taking a detour at the, at the moment. Do you think, uh, do, do you, th- are you surprised that an NFL team hasn't or didn't attempt to sign him? You know, I, I don't know what's all going You know, when I left the, the NFL, I got out and – haven't kept too close in touch with, you know, what's been going on. Certainly haven't talked to him or his agent. So I don't know what's been offered to him, what hasn't been offered to him. Uh, you know, you, you hear bits and pieces, but you really don't know what's going on fully unless you're in the front lines like his agents are dealing with it. Okay, that's fair enough. So uh, let, me, let, me, let me ask you one more and we'll, and we'll move on. Uh, you're, you're a personnel guy. You're, you're of an executive of the year. Uh, based on all the quarterbacks who have come and gone in the NFL since 2016, do, would you say that Colin Kaepernick is at least as good as some of those players we've seen on the field? Well, I think you have to look at his track record. You know, he won Super Bowl, uh, another NFC Championship game. He's won a lot of games. He's put up big numbers in those games, you know, with his arm and his feet. So he certainly had a, a run of success in the league. Uh, and that's all you can go by as an evaluator. What does the film tell you? And I think, you know, you, you study what he's done and what he's done recently, and, and you make a determination. And I can't speak for the other, you know, the, you know, the 32 evaluators or decision makers in the league right now, but his track record of success on the field kind of speaks for itself. Do you understand the, the reason for hope on optimism again in the Bay Area at that position? Yeah, I mean, I once again, I'm, I'm removed from there. I'm living in central Wisconsin, and uh, quite honestly, don't follow the media that often, and and uh, have my own things going on. But uh, you know, anytime you can get that position nailed down, the rest of it generally falls in place. You know, historically, when that position, when you're strong at that position, you 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 feel a pretty competitive football team. Uh, Trent Balky is with us on Melnick in the afternoon on TSN 690. What exactly are you doing for the NFL? Uh, just odds and ends. I'm working on the concussion protocol a little bit. Uh, I'm working on some combine stuff, uh, working on some speaking engagements to the draft-eligible players at college campuses across the country, and really whatever they ask me to do, doing a little bit with uh, – next generation stats and different projects that the league office has going on and just trying to stay active in in the game. So early on in your tenure as a general manager of the 49ers, you had an interesting dilemma, let's just call it that, at quarterback. You had Alex Smith, you had Colin Kaepernick. Uh, we know Alex Smith got hurt. Colin Kaepernick took over and, and the rest is history. But how tricky is it to manage that when you have a, an established starter and then you have the young kid who's kind of pushing up the rear? Well, the thing you're always trying to do is create competition. That's that's the number one job of a, you know, Coach Parcells told me that when I became a general manager. He said, you know, the day you forget that you're an evaluator is the day you're going to be looking for a new job. You're always trying to, to, to better the position, whether that's quarterback, running back, O-line, doesn't matter. You're trying to get better. And, 
you're trying to create as much competition in doing so. So it was a good problem at the time to have two competent quarterbacks, you know, and you, you then you entrust the coaches to make the best decisions they can for the team. Uh, so based on uh, the things you said you're currently doing uh, – uh, with the NFL, I- I'm curious uh, for the first part of what you said. How you, how quickly you think players are going to be able to address the helmet rule? You know, I was thinking about that because I knew that would be one of the questions. The thing is, change is never easy. Uh, it-, it creates a dimension uh, within the officiating of the game, and it certainly creates a dimension within the players adjusting to those the, the new officiating and the new changes. So. You know, just to, to make the new rule and, and think that it's going to be, an, you know, make have an instant impact is probably shallow thinking. And I don't think the league went into it thinking that, nor did the players or anybody else. It's going to take time, but it's for the betterment of the game. It's for the betterment of the safety of the game and for the players that obviously have to go out there and compete. So while there's some drawbacks initially as you, as you make change and adjust to the new rules, you know, I think in the long run, it's going to make the game safer, and that's the ultimate goal. Trent, is there anything that you that that you feel like you have the ability in your position working for the league uh, that that you can be uh, hands on in in leading something that you feel strongly about? Is there anything that you really feel strongly about that that's almost to the point that it could be a pet project moving forward? You know, I, I guess. My invo- I, I just want to stay involved in the game. I haven't looked at it as one specific thing that I can spearhead. You know, I, the, the uh, amount of experience I gathered over the six years running the front office, I think is beneficial to, to knowing how the players think, to knowing how the coaches think, uh, and to knowing how the league office thinks with, with, when I'm corresponding with them. So, yeah, I'm just willing to assist in any way I can. This game has meant an awful lot to me personally through the years, still does. And, uh, you know, now it's the time to give back. And I'll do that in any way the league office sees fit. Jalen Ramsey's uh, the outspoken corner from the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's been, you know, he's taken his shots uh, throughout the off season. Trent, uh, if if that was your player, I mean, how would you approach that as a general manager? Do you confront? Well, he, he went through it. Right. Well, that's it. But how did you, do you confront the player? What's the what's the approach? No, I, I think at some point someone's got to rein rein that in, you know. And everybody has their own management style, and uh, that's successful for them. So I don't know that there's one way to do it. If you're asking me personally, I think yeah, you you have to confront the situation, and you know, it, it's never it's never good putting bulletin board stuff out there. You know, I've never seen that as a beneficial uh, part of it. So. You know, you do the best you can, realizing that these guys are they're independent thinkers. You know, and, and uh, you, you got to give them the freedom. They're grown adults. you got to give them the freedom to express themselves. But you hope they do it in a positive manner and in a manner that that's not going to detract from the team. Who was your favorite NFL player as you were growing up? <laughs> oh, as I was growing up, you know, there, there were a lot of them. You know, I... I don't know that I ever had just one specific player that I looked at and said, well, I want to be that guy. Um, I just love, I've just always enjoyed the game. I've enjoyed the, the, uh, all that goes into it. And, uh, you know, now from all the experience I've had, knowing what goes, goes into this thing and how much sacrifice one makes to be a part of it, it gives you a real appreciation for, for the game itself. Season is underway. Tonight, right here on TSN, Trent Balky. Thanks an awful lot for taking time this afternoon and chatting with us. You bet, guys. Enjoy the the season. Enjoy the season. Thank you.